So here, side by side, we have a set of conformational and constitutional isomers. Now this concept might seem a little bit abstract to you, so I want to show you how we can apply this to objects we know and understand in real life. For example, cats. Because both cats and molecules are three-dimensional objects. So here on the left, we have the same cat, but in two different conformations, two different three-dimensional shapes of different energies. They can be converted into each other. However, just like cats tend to spend most of their time in the low energy conformation more than in the higher energy conformation, molecules do too, spending more time in the low energy staggered conformation than they do in the high energy eclipsed conformation. And on the right, we have constitutional isomers. Here, we've switched the position of a tail and a foot. These two cats are made of the same pieces, four legs, a head, and a tail, but the connectivity is completely different. No amount of rotation can change the cat on the left to the cat on the right. So based on this, we can start building a flowchart of different isomers. If the molecules have the same molecular formula but only differ in their three-dimensional shape, in other words, they can be interconverted through a bond rotation, we call them conformational isomers. If they differ in their connectivity, they are constitutional isomers. Now here's a question. Is it possible for two molecules to have the same molecular formula, the same connectivity, but not be the same molecule? And the answer is yes, we've actually seen this. For example, some molecules with double bonds are a perfect example. Both of these molecules, for example, are 2-butene, but they have different shapes. And since we can't rotate about a double bond without breaking it, these molecules have different physical properties, different belt boiling points, different melting points. They're different molecules. The same connectivity, but a different arrangement in space, cis and trans. The same is true for E and Z double bond isomers. This is also true of certain cyclic molecules. For example, both of these molecules are 1,4-dimethylcyclohexane, but they have different three-dimensional shapes. No amount of rotation can convert one into the other. They have the same connectivity, but a different arrangement in space, cis and trans. Now on the right here is a different way of showing a cyclic molecule, where we can see that likewise on the left, the two chlorines are on the same side of the ring or on the different side of the ring. Here we're looking at the cyclic molecule from the side. It's kind of a side-on view. So these are examples of stereoisomers. They've got the same connectivity, but a different arrangement in space. Now, just as a hint, EZ and cis-trans denote arrangements in space. So anytime you see two molecules which have the exact same name, but they only differ in their designation E or Z or cis or trans, you're dealing with stereoisomers. Now we're going to see that there's two important classes of stereoisomers. Stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images are called enantiomers. Now this term non-superimposable causes confusion sometimes, so we'll talk about that in a second. We can illustrate this again with cats. These are enantiomers. See how this cat has a white front right leg and this cat has a white front left leg? And do you see how they're mirror images? But they're not superimposable on each other. If you were sitting in your room and one of them walked in, you'd know immediately which one it was. It's either righty or lefty. So that's an illustration of enantiomers. Stereoisomers that are not non-superimposable mirror images are called diastereomers. In other words, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. These two cats, again, have the same components, the same connectivity, and they differ in their arrangement in space, but they are not mirror images. See the orientation of the white legs? They both have white back left legs, but they differ in their front legs. They're stereoisomers, but they're not mirror images. It's important to quickly note that when we use the words enantiomers and diastereomers, we're talking about a relationship between molecules. You're comparing two or more molecules just like you might compare the relationship between family members. Just like the term brother is meaningless for an only child, the term enantiomer or diastereomer is meaningless if you're only talking about one molecule. 
Just like in a family, it's possible for someone to be a brother and a cousin. It's also possible for one molecule to be a diastereomer of one molecule, but an enantiomer of another. For example, these two cats are diastereomers, but each of these cats also happens to have an enantiomer. And the relationship between these two cats is that they are also diastereomers. They're also non, they're not non-superimposable mirror images. In the latter part of this presentation, we're going to go into a lot more detail on how to tell the difference between two molecules, whether they're enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please upvote, comment, or share. In the crash course on stereochemistry, you'll find the full 61-minute presentation, along with dozens of solved practice exam problems, and over four hours of video where we walk through in step-by-step -step detail how to think through and solve the most important types of stereochemistry problems. For more, go to masterorganicchemistry.com backslash isocats. Thanks for watching.